Welcome to this remake of my very first video, an updated expanded version. Today we cover the top 10 greatest tales of Edward Nigma, aka the Riddler. Yes, the Riddler does have that many great stories. You were probably under the impression the only Batman villain with a plethora of great comics was the Joker. True, his exploits are more well known and universally loved. But if you dig a bit deeper, you'll find that good old Eddie has a fair share as well. Which goes for most Batman villains. And that's what this series is about. Spotlighting the great tales of these other Batman rogues. Comics that often go unnoticed. And hopefully you'll get some good reading material out of it. Now of course, these lists are merely my own personal opinion and not fact. So do keep that in mind. Anyway, let's get into it, shall we? Number 10. The Riddler's First Appearance Fittingly enough, we start off with the character's very first appearance, from Detective Comics 140 published in 1948. This story, simply titled The Riddler, was written by Batman creator Bill Finger and drawn by Dick Sprang. Yes, his name is Dick Sprang, get over it. Anyway, the Riddler's first appearance is not exactly some complex, deep masterpiece. It's mainly just some good old-fashioned golden age fun. The story quickly explains the character's origin. Edward Nigma developed an interest in puzzles, specifically rigged puzzles, at a young age. When he grew up, he became a small-time crook and made money through these puzzles. Eventually though, conning yokels out of their pocket change wasn't enough, and the smug Edward decided that he was fit for the big times. Pulling off major crimes and challenging Batman and Robin with his puzzles. And so he did, becoming the Riddler, beginning the most bizarre career in the annals of crime. And the rest of the comic follows Batman and Robin trying to decipher Eddie's crooked clues and stopping his crime spree. A lot of good times. It's interesting how Riddler was pretty much fully formed already in his first story. Later stories have mainly fleshed him out, but not really added too much. This very first outing also still continued to influence his appearances to this day. Like for instance, his origin and the riddles here have been reused in later stories. And putting people in saw-like puzzle traps is something we've seen in, for instance, the Arkham games. Number 9. Nightfall Nightfall is of course the major 1993 arc where Bane came to Gotham City for the very first time and broke loose all the inmates of Arkham. When it comes to the Riddler, he made his Nightfall appearances in issues 621 and 622 of Detective Comics, written by Chuck Dixon and drawn by Graham Nolan. With the city overrun by freed Arkham lunatics, no one really has time to pay any attention to the riddle clues Eddie sends in to the police and the media. Thus, he can't even pull off his riddle crimes. I mean, what's the point if no one notices them? Desperate for attention, Eddie does the only thing he can think of. He crashes a live talk show strapped in a bomb belt and begins asking riddles to the audience. If there ever was a story to perfectly showcase the Riddler's need for attention, it's gotta be this one. Edward appearing on TV is also a perfect fit for the character, considering he's all about showmanship. This trope has of course been used again and expanded upon in later years. The talk show also happens to feature Eddie's old Arkham Doctor turned author as a guest, which leads to some pretty funny dialogue exchanges. Sure, Riddler's part in Nightfall is kinda brief, but nevertheless very memorable and entertaining. Number 8. Zero Year A year-long arc that was published across issues 21 to 33 of the second volume of Batman in 2013 and 2014. Scott Snyder wrote it and Greg Capullo drew it. Zero Year serves as a modernized retelling of Batman's origin. It details Bruce Wayne's journey into becoming a superhero and recounts his first encounters with villains such as Dr. Death, the Red Hood Gang, and of course, the Riddler. At the end of the day, it's the Riddler who's truly the main villain of the arc. Just like Batman is, Riddler too is reimagined in this story. Here, he is a brilliant, but corrupt and psychotic employee at Wayne Enterprises. 
Edward eventually dubs himself the Riddler and uses his skills with technology to basically shut down Gotham. He turns off all the power in the city and floods it by blowing up the reservoir. With Gotham a savage no man's land, the Riddler seizes complete control of it. In fitting Riddler fashion, he then appears on a giant jumbotron and challenges anyone to beat him with a riddle. Offer up a riddle that he cannot solve. If someone manages to do that, he will let go control of the city. Why is Edward pulling off this mad scheme? Well, as he himself claims, he simply wants to help Gotham get smarter. He's seen the error of our human ways and where our civilization is heading, and he doesn't like it. He's afraid of what the future might bring, and has thus decided to force us to do better. Quite a mad and delusional scheme indeed. You definitely gotta give Zero your props for painting up the Riddler as such a massive threat. Before this comic, a lot of people used to view him as almost a B-list loser villain. That's naturally absurd, but clearly a lot of people need these massive earth-shattering arcs to take the villain seriously. So I thank Zero Year for supplying Riddler with that. It also supplied the character with a very interesting reinterpretation. A Riddler who wants to do good, but in his own mad, misguided way? That is quite fascinating. Luckily, he still keeps most of his typical characteristics too, like his arrogance, superiority complex, and desperate need for attention. Number 7. Riddler on the Move A one-shot published in Batman 263 in 1975. It was written by legendary Batman writer Dennis O'Neill and drawn by Ernie Chan. It was actually the Riddler's first appearance in the Bronze Age, after several years of absence following the end of the campy 60s. So, placing an obscure 70s single issue ahead of Zero Year? Are you nuts, rogues? Well, like I said at the beginning, this list is my personal opinion. I don't know if Riddler on the Move is better than Zero Year, it probably isn't, but I personally enjoy it more. Partly it's due to nostalgia as this comic was the very first Riddler story I ever read. And no, I'm not that old. I wasn't around in 1975. I read an old used copy of a Swedish reprint of it much later. So yes, nostalgia does play a large part in this story's inclusion, but it's not exclusively nostalgia. So what's the plot of the comic? Well, that's just it. The plot is very forgettable. Basically, Riddler wants to, for some reason, start up a criminal for hire service. He'll hire out crooks with certain skills for jobs, like a getaway driver for a heist or a safe cracker. That's not important though, and the comic barely pays any attention to it. To start this operation off, Eddie needs cash, and that's where the focus is. The crimes he pulls off to get this startup cash. Those crimes are pretty basic Riddler stunts though. So what is it about this comic then? Other than nostalgia I mean. Well, it's in the characterization of Edward. That's what I really like about it. See, this is a Riddler who's compelled to commit crime, as he points out himself. It's not that he really wants to be a criminal, he can't help himself. And another bizarre compulsion he has is to stick people up in the street and ask them a riddle. If they get it wrong, he steals their money. However, if they get it right, he gives them money. Again, this is not something he needs to do, he just has to. That unique and quirky characterization combined with nostalgia is why I love this forgotten obscure little comic. Number 6. Bad Girls Lethal Pursuits Riddled a three-parter published across issues 705-707 to of Detective Comics in 1996. The writer was Chuck Dixon and the artist Graham Nolan. Yes, them again. They were a great team back in the 90s and no one writes the Riddler as well as Dixon, which we'll of course get more into later on the list. So in this story, the Riddler kidnaps fellow rogue, the Clue Master, you know, the discount version of the Riddler, and straps a bomb vest capable of blowing up an entire block to his chest. Eddie then leaves him for Batman and his sidekicks to find. Unless the Bat family are able to solve a series of riddles, each within 15 minutes tops, Riddler will press the detonator, making Clue Master go kaboom. 
So not only does Eddie get to play with Batman, he also gets revenge on the guy who stole his gimmick. Naturally, there's more at stake too, as Riddler plans to top it all off with a grand caper. This story doesn't necessarily do anything new or groundbreaking with the character, but damn it if it isn't a really fun Riddler yarn. It's classic Riddler at its very finest. And if all you want is a great classic styled Riddler tale, then I can't recommend this one more. It also does a great job at demonstrating the frustration involved when going up against the Riddler and his tedious clues. Which after playing the Arkham games, we all know so well ourselves. Plus I also gotta give the story props for featuring Query and Echo, Riddler's forgotten sidekicks. Now whatever happened to them? Why haven't they gotten as big as Harley? When are we getting our overdose of Query and Echo? Number 5. Private Detective Riddler When Paul Dini, famous writer of the Batman the Animated Series and the Arkham games, became the main writer on Detective Comics in 2006, he did something really interesting with the Riddler. In the very second issue of his run, Detective 822, he established Edward as a reformed villain who'd given up on crime, and started up a private detective agency. Yep, the Riddler was a supervillain no more. He was instead a legit PI, solving crimes instead of committing them. This heroic Edward Nigma made numerous appearances throughout Paul Dini's Detective Comics run, and later also in his Gotham City Sirens series, featuring Catwoman, Poison Ivy, and Harley Quinn as the leads. This version of Riddler also made a few appearances in other comics not written by Dini. So I'm basically lumping together all Detective Nigma appearances here. There's not really any specific story to pinpoint. Anyway, like I said, Riddler solved crimes instead of committed them during this era. Naturally, that's a really interesting spin on a character. It also led to great moments where Eddie teamed up with Batman, now that both of them were on the same side. Arch enemies, fighting side by side all of a sudden. Making the Riddler a detective of all villains was a perfect fit as well, as he's a character who prides himself on his intellect, and his gimmick is to create mysteries. If he can create mysteries, naturally he can solve them as well. Number 4. Dark Knight, Dark City Published across Batman issues 452 to 454 in 1990, the story was written by Peter Milligan and drawn by Kieran Dwyer. So in the comic, the Riddler is at it again, running rampant throughout Gotham City on yet another Riddle crime spree. Same old Eddie, huh? Well, not exactly. This crime spree of his is far more vicious and murderous than usual. Even his own goons point out that he's gone crazier than the Joker. Clearly something is wrong with Edward, but what is it? A midlife crisis? No, it's a tad more dramatic than that. As it turns out, Edward has actually been possessed by a demon. Yep, you heard that right. This is a story where the Riddler is possessed by a demon. And this time, his riddle clues lead to something far more frightening than a bank heist. This is basically a supernatural horror story with a completely crazed Riddler. What not to love about that? Now, I obviously prefer a less murderous and more light-hearted Riddler, and in normal cases I wouldn't like such a dark take as we get here. The reason it works is because it is out of character, that's the entire point of the story. It would not have worked, and I would have hated the story if it tried to pass it off as if Eddie was always like this. Sometimes we get that in comics, they take a so-called goofy villain and reimagine them in an edgy way. That's not this comic though, this is a genuinely fascinating what-if scenario. What if the Riddler was a complete monster like the Joker? I personally also love this comic because it was among the earliest Riddler stories I read, possibly even the second one. Plus, it's a really good detective story for Batman, and it's also nice to get some supernatural aspects in a Batman story for once, which is somewhat rare. Number 3. The Riddler's Robberies of the Riddler A Silver Age classic published in Detective Comics 179 in 1966. It was written by Gardner Fox and drawn by Sheldon Moldoff. 
Yep, here we have a real olden goldie that came out just as a campy Adam West TV show began airing. The story is very much in tone with the TV show, like most Bat comics were at the time. He was simply the Batman of the times. Don't let this silliness fool you though, this comic is actually quite deep and complex. Yeah, it really is. In the story, Eddie has grown tired of always being bested by Batman and Robin. He concludes that the reason for his failures are his riddle clues. So, desiring to pull off a successful crime for once, the Riddler attempts a jewelry heist without alerting Batman with a riddle. To his shock though, he can't do it. He can't steal the jewelry. His mind won't let him take it because he didn't send a riddle. Yeah. This is the very first comic to establish the fact that Edward is mentally ill. His riddles aren't a gimmick, they're a sick compulsion. Nevertheless, after some intense mental training, the Riddler is finally able to commit riddleless robberies. Or is he? Is he still actually sending out riddles to Batman without even knowing it himself? extremely vague clues to his crimes that almost no one would pick up on. Well, that's for Batman and Robin to figure out, and for the Riddler to discover, much to his dismay. Who knew it, huh? That a Riddler story from the 60s could actually have something truly interesting and profound to say about the character. Sure, the comic features a lot of 60s silliness as well, and while I know that isn't everyone's cup of tea, don't pass it up on account of that, because you'll regret it. Number 2. A New Dawn A three-part story published across issues 26 to 28 of the short-lived and forgotten Batman title, Batman Confidential, in 2009. It was written by Nuncio de Filippis and Christina Weir, while it was drawn by Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. In the story, there is a new villain in town, a brutal serial killer who dresses like an ancient Egyptian pharaoh, calling himself King Tut. Yep, it's a modernized version of the old 60s TV show villain, and the first time that character appeared in the comics. Anyway, King Tut goes around killing employees of a certain Gotham museum, spouting riddles as he does so. Naturally, Batman assumes the Riddler is somehow involved and decides to pay Eddie a visit in Arkham. Turns out he had nothing to do with it though, but he'll gladly help catch this King Tut. Mind you, not out of the goodness of his own heart, but because his gimmick has been stolen. Again. What we then get is another team-up story with Batman and the Riddler. That seems to be a trend with the character. This story, however, is by far the best team-up they've had. In some of those private detective Riddler stories, he was proven to be less clever than Batman, and not as brilliant as he thought. That's not the case here. In fact, Riddler is pretty much smarter than Batman in this comic. He really is as brilliant as he boasts. I'd say no other comic does a better job at showing how smart Riddler really is. I also don't know if I've ever seen his smug, snarky personality written better than here. Yeah, this story simply features a perfect Riddler. Incredibly clever and extremely entertaining. And again, it's really nice to see him fighting on the side of the angels for once. And now for the greatest Riddler story of them all. Number 1. Questions Multiply the Mystery Published in Detective Comics Annual No. 8 in 1995, this absolute masterpiece was written by Chuck fucking Dixon and drawn by Kieran Dwyer. Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind that this is the greatest Riddler story ever told. It's an origin story, Riddler Year One, so to speak. In the comic, Eddie, who's locked up in Arkham, finally decides to open up to his Arkham doctor. The infamous Riddler finally decides to shed some light on his mysterious past and relate how he became who he is. Surprisingly though, it's a rather mundane story. There was no singular turning point or dramatic event that sent him on his villainous path. He was just a nobody who got fed up with not being noticed. An overlooked kid screaming for attention. A completely unremarkable man who desperately wanted to prove to the world that he was remarkable. 
proved that he was smart. A genius, in fact. That's really it. And it's so perfect. So much better than a silly over-the-top cliché origin where his parents were murdered on a dark stormy night by a question mark. Or you know, something like that. Nah, this comic is not that. It's not stupid. It's not hokey. It's not melodramatic. It's a simple, yet incredibly compelling story of a man. A person. Not a walking theme or gimmick. It's the most human Riddler has ever been. And it's the only comic where we truly get to know Riddler. If you only read one Riddler comic, you gotta make it this one. Forget the bigger stories like Zero Year or Hush. Pick this one. You'll thank me later. And there you have it. The top 10 greatest Edward Nygma stories, in my opinion, of course. If you're interested in The Riddler, read these comics. Next up for a top 10 is The Penguin, the Buccaneer of Birds. And as always, remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.